This episode of The Honeydew is brought to you by Upstart, Omax, and Odd One Out Comics. More on that later. Let's get into the do. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We are over here doing it in the Night Pants Studios. I am Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all social media. And as always, I want to s- sincerely say thank you to everyone out there. Thank you for however you support the show, whether it's through sponsors, merch, comments, just nice, whatever it is. Thank you for real. It makes a difference. Right now is a, a strange time, so I appreciate the positivity back. I really do. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. We've got time codes in there if you want to jump to different stories. Uh, make sure if you have a story or someone you know has a story you think needs to be told, and heard sign up for the patreon show um, and submit your story honeydew podcast at gmail.com all the links are on the honeydew podcast.com i can't thank you enough night pants nation you you guys so i want you to know you sold out the manufacturer's fucking night pants like those people are like what's going on out there and it's it's a revolution is what the fuck's going on so thank you for your comfortable support uh, facebook fan page all that stuff it's all there um as far as what we do here, if you're new, we highlight the lowlights. I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers. Today, I'm very excited to have my guest. First time here on The Honeydew. Ladies and gentlemen, mm-hmm. please welcome the one and only Tom Arnold, y'all. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, young man. Right. Now, what, what are night pants? Thank you. Night pants are, you probably call them pajamas or loungewear. Oh, I like that. But I put them on at night. Yeah. I've called them my night I pants. Put them on during the day if you're fat. Or I, I wear them. That sounds like something w- that uh, me and the kids would like. I haven't been in a pair of jeans since yeah. this shit hit. Since yeah. March. Well, yeah. you know, and also I thought you meant night pants like that. You could see at night when you're out looting. And uh, <laughs> night shirt. You know, uh, you know, I do. It's a uh, good idea, though. It is a good idea, man. Night pants joggers. Jeez see Louise. them at night. And you get a good movement. You know, uh. Uh, it's good to be here. Now, I know you from comedy, right? We do. Yeah. Laugh Factory is where we first there met you way go. back when. I did your show there. That's how I met Joel Mandelkorn. Oh, yes. Uh, Joel Mandelkorn, my I old assistant. Say, what's that? Yeah. My yeah, old yeah. assistant. Still working with Joel. He's a great dude. He great is a dude. great dude. Yeah. Well, you know, Joel. Joel Mandy, can I tell a Joel story? Do you mind if I tell Joel? I don't. Medical? Can I say one thing real yeah. quick? Um, Mandy Johnson, Joel's partner, has oh, a fantastic shoot. book out called Super Serious. Um, go, it's I've promoted it. Go find it on my IG, wherever, and get it. It's a great book about alternative comedy in Los Angeles. Please. She is so talented. Yeah. Well, they, you know, Joel started uh, working for me, Joel Battlecord, and uh, uh, you know, uh, I was living over here. There's, a, you know, I've been divorced. Uh, 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 only four times. And <laughs> there is a building called 1221 Ocean Boulevard. It's on the ocean. It's beautiful. And it, it's where a lot of uh, divorced people live. Or uh, it's a great, you know, temporarily. Uh, Britney Spears is my next door neighbor then. And uh, she was actually married to uh, Kevin Federline at the time. But you see a lot of people in and out. And it's, it'd be a great building to do a, a TV show about because you hear and see a lot of great things in there. Uh, it's sort of like that in between jobs, like yeah. that, that, that building. Yeah, yeah. but if it's in actually, between jobs was a, an apartment complex. Right. Yeah, yeah. I had a, <laughs> it's a beautiful building. I had a delightful time there, and uh, uh, you know, my friend, there's a guy named David Foster who is probably the the best uh, music composer of all time. Uh, the people he's worked with, Michael Jackson. Andre Bocelli, you just, he has a document. There's a documentary about David Foster. He is the best of the best. And he's been married more than once. And I love all of his wives. And uh, he was, uh, (laughs) but he's just, he's an amazing human being who's, uh, he's worked with every big uh, band. And and he was in between marriages too. And he came downstairs, he had a girlfriend and he may have married her probably. Anyway, he came downstairs, and there's a an office area, big, that people come in to do their work, to do whatever. And, and he kind of was like, hey, Tom, how you doing? And he's kind of like, shh. And he called uh, another f- lady uh, who was not his uh, girlfriend. And he wasn't, like, engaged to the, the woman. And he's like, you know, he's talking to this other gal. He was in between. <laughs> and uh, he's like, keep it. You know, of course, I'm going to not say anything. 
And then about he went upstairs, and about 20 minutes later, his girlfriend came down, oh, and she shit. called it a guy. And I just thought, that is the funniest <laughs> thing in the world. And, uh, and then I Love had them. And the uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds lived there, too, at the time. God, and damn. Uh, He's a great. He worked out in the gym there, and I saw him one day. And then, then he went on. Uh, 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 no, and I saw him. And I don't think he saw me because he went on Conan O'Brien, and he he was on the cover of like Men's Health magazine, looking super fit. And uh, Conan pulled that out, and and, uh, and he and he said, got such great self deprecating humor. Ryan Reynolds, I love him. I he's amazing, dude. And he said uh, he wanted to make fun of himself because he didn't like it. He was uncomfortable that Conan pulled that out because he looked so amazing. And he said, uh, but when I let out my breath, I look like Tom Arnold. He just said that. And, uh, and then I saw him in the gym and said, yeah, thanks a lot. And, <laughs> and, uh, I, but I played it tough. Yeah, and yeah. so then he. Uh, I'm and, in 4C, motherfucker. And then, but then uh, came to my door upstairs a note and a bottle of uh champagne of that dom perignon nice. said listen that was a classless thing for me to do uh i apologize ryan reynolds and it was a bottle of champagne and then i took that note and sent it back to his room saying i'm a recovering alcoholic <laughs> yeah, yeah and i just i just said but uh and uh, yeah but uh that's what i'm talking but about i Kick love him, him. i just love him and, and uh <laughs> I, I genuinely That's don't. Really nice. that, yeah. I'm honored that someone would make a joke about me. I've always been like that. Like, you have to be, since I started this business, you know, for someone to make a joke about you, for Johnny Carson or anyone, you know, uh, what, it's funny. You know, that was so funny. And then to be able to keep the... But Keep also it going. They got to know who the yeah. fuck you are. Yeah, so Who's anyway... out there doing Yes, something. they do. And, yes. and when you're a name, the people know. So, Joel Madacord became my assistant based on his credentials and Mandy was his uh, girlfriend and and you know and she's very cute and very smart and this is awesome. so anyway Joel starts working for me and he's sitting in front of me where that apartment working and I did have a wife at the time I can't remember if it was Ju Julie or Shelby it was in between Roseanne and my last wife and uh, we're sitting there and uh, Joel uh, has a uh, 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 Joel has a, a, you know, and you want to address everything when you meet him. Like, hey, let's just get this out of the way. Not a big deal. And I said, you know, I think that Joel may have had, uh, he might, I said to uh, my wife, let's, let's say it's Shelby. Let's say Shelby. Hey, I think, uh, I think Joel might have a, what do you call, uh, a, 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 a cleft uh, palate. And she's like, oh, I go, I'm going to ask him. She says, what? Don't, 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 I'm leaving. I go, no, no, I think he, I think he'd be cool. I think I just got to address it. I think I just, she's like, uh, do not say, I go, no, I think he's cool. Like, I would want somebody to address if I was, you know, was missing an arm or something. I think he, <laughs> we're going to be dead. So he's sitting behind me, and so I go like this to Joel. Hey, Joel, and she's still in the room. She's like, oh, I freaking hate you. Hey, Joel, listen, uh, hey. You did uh, this in front of her? And then I saw his email, yeah. Joel, I, Joel's email address yeah. was, cleft clips and i was like yeah joel hey so uh well this email address of yours <laughs> wow that's interesting where uh where did uh whew, what's that where did you come up with that and he, and he turned around and he goes tom i have a hair lip <laughs> and and, and I, go, I go, what? I had no, I, I, what are you talking about? Oh, and he just no. busted me so hard, but he was so <laughs> talented. And I remember one time we were at the, uh, we were at the Burials Hotel and uh, Joaquin Phoenix came up to me. And uh, Joaquin Phoenix is one of the, well, he's a brilliant actor, but he's one of the best uh, human beings you'll ever know and really uh, is of service to a lot of uh, people in in our community and it is a great human being and, and you talk about a low uh you know i was filming true lies uh, back in i think 93 and and uh, you know I, I i mean if you just hear his voice on the 911 call when his brother uh died on the on yeah. sunset boulevard outside of the viper room i mean how do you ever uh recover from that you do we go on i don't know uh but uh 
you know, and uh, and so I know him as being a very on honest, uh, wonderful uh, human being. Anyway, he comes over, and I'm sitting there with Joel at at the polo lounge. He comes over, gives me a hug. We talk a little bit, and Joel's like, Joel Matterport always acted too cool for school. Like, hey, no big deal. He's that impressive. Always. And yeah, then, but yeah. with Joaquin Phoenix, I introduced him to Joel, and Joel's like, Lo- there's hearts coming out of his eyes <laughs> like a cartoon. And uh, and Joel said, no, uh, he is, Joaquin is the, because there, there's, there's apparently, yeah. they th- his yeah. lip too, he is the king of the, I don't want, you know, of them, of whatever. <laughs> so that them. was the one time, <laughs> that was the one time he was uh, impressed. But, you know, they, I've had a lot of assistants that have moved on to do amazing things. Joel and uh, one guy uh, did uh, SpongeBob and what, several, what, Emmys and, you know, uh, you, you know that's a, that. That means I'm old. That means uh, you know. Uh, well, I want to talk about that. Yeah. Because but but I have to. But I'm here today to talk about. You know, you don't always realize how dark things are, or that there's sort of a a fog in your life. I mean, you 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 get up and go, you go at it. And, and uh, I also think it's important to not uh, carry ghosts. Into to not fight ghosts in your adult life from your childhood. A lot of people, they're still battling those still, ghosts. And yeah. you know, I always said I wanted to be a father. My father was twenty when he was twenty-two. He was a single father, and I was four. My sister was three. My brother was one. And uh, and and, uh, and and you know, he worked uh, in a factory. We're from a very blue-collar small town, and uh, and where. In Ottumwa, Iowa, southeast Iowa, and uh, uh, so can I ask you? He's a single dad. Do you see your mom at all as a split custody? Daddy, no, or no, 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 no. My parents, my mom was a, an alcoholic like me, and uh, married seven times. Very chaotic life, and they went to court at first. And my dad's parents, uh, who, who were paying for both, and it came time to put me on the stand to basically say, "Who do you love more?" Your mom or your dad, and then dad just couldn't do it. Oh, and so you remember this. That next day, I do remember that. I remember very little, but it's also documented. And, and also, um, after my my last divorce, I kind of went through all the stuff and and uh, you know uh, read everything, which which makes it important to leave some some uh, digital footprints for your kids too about your life. But uh, you know he. He, the day after this, uh, my dad gave up in court. He's like, I can't do that. And then the day after that, my mother came to my dad's office and said, here's the keys to the house. The kids are there with the babysitter. They're yours. So that was a big wow. moment. That's a big moment because looking back for me, you know, I, I'm now the oldest of seven kids. And, you know, she, pa- she passed away when she was probably you know, 20, 30 years ago. So, you know, uh, as, as you know, if you continue to abuse your body with alcohol and just that hard life and smoking, there's a lot of smoking where I'm from, you know, it wears out on you. It, uh, you know, uh, and that's what happened with her. And we had a very acrimonious relationship at the end of her life. I remember, uh, you know, it's when I, early on with Roseanne and I's marriage, and I was going to make, I was going to try to, to work things you know, I, I made overtures. We talked with this and that because I'd gotten sober and I knew how to do that. Was she was she out of your life completely or was it an in and out? Well, sort of I mean, I was you grew. I would uh, go say hi to her. And, okay. you know, I did, uh, you know, a stop by here and there. Yeah, I stopped by and see her and I did. Uh, but did she live close? Well, she lived in Iowa. And then but how Rose, far away? Roseanne and I had a split. Uh, I mean, we had a uh, I was very she lived very close. I remember as a kid. Everyone's parents did back yeah. then. They stayed close. Well, you did, our town was so small. I mean, I but I w- it was still a million miles away from my dad's house. Yeah, and I, I remember going to look for her, and going house to house. Oh. It's very small, and uh, and finding her once on the couch with a guy, and but you'd go out, and then I remember get almost getting hit by a car, and just being taken back to my dad's, and you just, you know. Uh, you you you're looking for something, and, and you make these uh, parents uh, heroes, you know, because she'd always say, "I'm coming back, I'm coming to get you." And, and you know, I also have to be honest; I had wonderful grandmothers. 
Me too. You know, I love hearing who, that. Who just love me unconditionally. Her mother and my dad's mother. And they're different kinds of grandmothers. My dad's mother was on me. She, my dad's mother ironed his underwear until she got out of high school. <laughs> Very nice people. They traveled. Uh, my dad's uh, father was, uh, you know, he ran social services for our part of Iowa. They, they got educations. They, they had money. They traveled. Uh, they were part of the being of service to their community. Uh, and, you know, really wonderful people. My, my grandfather was, uh, you know, uh, in the war, he was one of the first people into Dachau. My mother's side is Jewish. My, 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 my dad's side isn't, but he, you know, they had, and my uh, dad's, my uncle wrote the book, The Secret Life of Adolf Hitler, made that documentary. Um, but my mother's side, uh, they, were, they were working class. My grandfather on my mother's side worked at the meatpacking plant for 45 years. And, and the, the Jewish, there were four Jewish families where I'm from, and they were working class people. The, the four Cohen sisters that moved to this part of Iowa uh, many years, many years ago, they assimilated into the working, you know, they were, they yeah. were and that's what we did. And uh, and so, uh, you know, I worked at a pork processing plant for to save money for college. That's that's what we did. So, but my grandmother, my mother's mother, um, who uh, did not get her driver's license until my grandfather died, and just didn't do. You know, it's different. But she, and, and this is a key with kids. Kids know if you don't want to be with them. Yes, they do. And she <laughs> wanted to be with me. I mean, she didn't say much. But she would sit on the couch with me, and we would, whether we watch TV together, or whether she cut up beans, or whether whatever we were doing, because, you know, uh, we're, we're from farm country. She want I knew she wanted to be with That's me. That's really interesting you say that, mm -hmm. because there's so much put into verbal communication these days and everything, but you're fucking right. It, yeah. Maybe sometimes nothing said between two people who just want to be together and be mm -hmm. present with each other is more powerful than sitting there having fucking, you know, small talk. Yeah, that's that's that, I've never even thought of that before. What how powerful it is that I want to be with you. Maybe she doesn't know how to communicate so well or whatever. But, yeah, you felt that that need to be present. Mm -hmm. that, that's yeah. Wow, yeah. That's and, awesome. And she also uh, and, I, and uh, she also fed me. Whatever I wanted to eat, and just was <laughs> impressed yeah. by my eating, and you know, because my dad was did not know how to cook. Both my grandmothers were great that way, and you know, it's funny because my grandfather, my mother's father, was a big, big guy, and he was big into sports and tough for the meatpacking plant and tough, and uh, you know, I saw him get into more than one fight, and he's tough, and uh, uh, you know, if you're a big tough Jew and a big uh, you know, plus he, you know, if you're from a small town and you're different at all, like I didn't have a mother, so people say stuff. So my grandpa, I, I'm sure, had to step up and get into, you know. But uh, my grandmother, the, you know, he also got stern with me a few times, you know. And, and, and I do remember my grandmother, even if he got crabby with me, just looking at him and you because you think well this is a woman that didn't even get to drive she doesn't get to have i bet he keeps her in this but uh i i saw her do things to him without saying anything where he'd be like oh, oh you know listen you're her favorite i don't i mean he just would be <laughs> she could crush him he he, he but, and you know i he has a right to go you know, uh, you know, there's some things. Sometimes I did stuff wrong. You know, I got in some trouble. Sometimes I, but if he got just crabby with me, as as men tend to do, then she he'd come back head. outside to whatever and say, "Listen, <laughs> God, damn it." <sighs> you know, I mean, he just, he, you know, you're her, her favorite. You just tell that she'd put it back out there, and but I'd sure love being with him. I just loved being around him. I loved going to games with him. I loved it. So we all were, us kids, uh, were, were look at, looked after uh, uh, in different ways. And then when I was 10, when, we were, when I was 10, my dad married the next-door neighbor. Now, nah, did he? Yeah. 
Now, well, hold on. Can we talk about this for a second? Yeah. Our 20s were a, a while ago. 22, three fucking kids, yeah. all under what, five at the yeah, time? Yeah, all under Man. five. Man. My brother wasn't even one. And uh, Wow. Yeah, and so your dad sounds like a strong man well, as well. Well, he is, and uh, I at the time I, I do remember saying, "God, you're boring, you know, you cub." We were, you know, you work at the factory, and uh, and then we want you to play with us for it. And he would get on the floor and play with us, you know. But he did work a lot, and uh, you know, you always want more. And uh, I think about that now because you know, I became a father at fifty four, and you know, he did, yeah, he, did pretty, he did pretty yeah. well, you know. Yeah. And in our town, too, I have to say that uh, it's very uh, union town. And uh, I, I remember my dad, he worked so hard. And, and he did. He finally got, so he was management, I have to say. He finally saved enough money because he had to drop out of college when my mom said she was pregnant. So when she was 16, my uncle went on. Very successful. My aunt went to New York, an actress on TV and Broadway. My dad dropped out of school to take care of us. So he, he earned his degree slowly, slowly. But uh, his plant went on strike, and he, he'd just gotten this Mercury Marquee convertible used, and he was so proud of it, and he parked it in the driveway, and our cousin was one of the men that blew it up. There was a strike. <laughs> And then the police, and it was like my dad was so, because my dad was in a show off and he was the youngest of that his family. They blew it up. And they blew it up and it was, the cops had to wait till they did it. They were outside. They knew it was going to happen and it incinerated it. And my dad, you know, uh, you know, because my dad did time study. He was an industrial engineer. So he said, well, if you make this many pieces of this, uh, d industrial knife, you'll make this amount of money, and if you work this fast, very specific, you know, it's, it's numbers. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like he was, you know, and and man, the, the union guys, I, it <laughs> just, you know, you know, it, it, <laughs> it was my cousin, now, Tommy buddy. Richmond. I'll see you at the Tommy fuck Richmond. But you know, we, but uh, again, when I, when I grew older and Hormel, my meatpacking plant was I trying, more, yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. You know, that it, you worked it, there no, at Hormel? But, that was where you did the yeah, pork? Yeah, yeah, the most famous strike, uh, meatpacking plant strike ever. Uh, you know, I, I was so excited. I was like, yeah, we're going to, I don't even know what the strike's about, but I am all in because it's going to get crazy, you know. And then, of course, they fired everybody and just changed the name on the outside of the building to <laughs> Excel and hired people half the, but, you know, it's a very intense uh you know, but my dad did. I mean, there's so many things I think about him. Uh, God, and, I, and I'll tell you what, Ryan, I always thought this, too. Because my mom, you know, she would sort of, she had this allure. And the next door neighbor that he married, who had two kids, who I'd known since they were born, he asked us, he sat us down and said, do you mind if I marry wow. Ruth? And, and, How old are you at that time? Nine. Okay. And uh, she would babysat us some. And she's from a different world, you know. She's more of a... Uh, you know, uh, everybody's uh, sort of a redneck, but she's more of a hillbilly. You know, she's smaller, you know, and she'd, uh, she, she was big on the corporal punishment. And we, I don't think we'd ever had that. And, uh, you know, uh, and I think she was younger. Like what sort of, was she hit you? Oh, smack yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Shoe? Yeah. Uh, she'd grown up that way. And she yeah. was not my dad. She was younger than my dad. So she was even closer to my age. And I was the oldest. And I think she... Uh, and I, I'm sure I was a handful, but, you know, I was a kid. I think she thought, well, I'm going to break this one. And, uh, you know, very – And uh, but we did tell him, yeah, because we, like, you know, felt bad for him because, you know, dating was hard, and uh, and I, I, he had the best of intentions. Like my sister, you know, did not have a, a female influence on a daily basis. Yeah. Oh, but she was so rough. You know, I remember Lori uh, – uh, tackling her was because my dad had said you have to put on clean underwear every day he told all of us and I, I, I tackled her from behind I pulled down the back of her pants and she had like five different pairs she was putting on clean underwear on top of on her top underwear of <laughs> and, and my mom was not a feminine you know she, my mom said two things I'm not mat maternal so and I'm not going to tell you I love you but I will tap you on the knee once in a while that's the signal Man. but then she was rough people are kind of rough you know, the, the, I, I don't mean rough to insult that, 
it's like the but the 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 women uh, uh there's you know we compete uh there's a lot of uh a barrel rope and, and we could be those are competitive sports for you know you grow up the the women work the girls work on the farm but their dad if their dad dies the girl takes over it's not like you go oh shoot i gotta find a boy no no they're doing it with you whatever you do when you go out in the fields of work that your sister is doing it standing next to you with a bus when you go down to the church parking lot to get on the bus with the drifters yeah, that's why you do right, every summer right, you go details of court <laughs> your sister's with you there's no they don't go girl it's gonna be easier for you you know she's with you a girl's softball basketball when i was growing up in iowa are way more popular we're way you know state tournaments are way more popular than the boys were because they you know they were they're better uh they're better athletes they're a better team mm -hmm. you know they people just cared more uh so you know it's hard to tell you know uh who they're just rough but my dad also wanted you know he felt bad that she doesn't have the you know, you want to be around. You want to have a a, a female in your yeah. life, and she was so. That was that's what I guess he thought of a lot of things. He thought I'm going to do this. Could be the best thing. It was rough for me, and I ended up moving out and uh, moved in with my grandparents uh, uh, the next year. Wow! But I moved in with the, his parents, his parents. Okay. who are my grandma is super nice, super nice, and the first day i was in school and i came home with a black eye because that's what happens in school to boys they get in a fight and they have a black eye and i didn't think anything about it and i'm eating dinner with my grandpa and my grandma and all of a sudden she puts her head down and starts weeping and my grandpa's like what what's going on and it's because i had a black eye i didn't even know that like i'd gotten a fight no big deal and then i remember thinking oh she's gonna be weeping all the time <laughs> Because, you, you know, it was a rough grandma. town. Yeah. It was a rough, <laughs> rough town. And, and uh, uh, I, I, I'm not going to be able to live here because that's another side. You go, you go from people that uh, have animus towards you to people that care so much that, whoa, I, I'd rather be somewhere in the middle. And, and also at that time, I, I did, you know, you look at these people that are like these Eskimos, these angels. And... Uh, I did get, uh, I wasn't popular. Again, if you don't have a, a mother, if you're different, if you're, and there were the older kids, and I'm sh I, I guarantee I brought, you know, I, I, because I brought it on myself, and you, there's a lot of, growing up, a lot of fighting, a lot of fist boys, you know that. Tons of fights, tons. Yeah, so, you know, I got uh, chased out of that to, uh, school uh, towards home, and at the bottom of the hill for my grandmother's was uh, St. Mary's, catholic church and uh you know i don't i didn't know obviously i didn't go there but I, they had a young priest that just got to town and uh you know i and he see me get chased you know fighting and getting chased up towards there and, and uh he was out outdoors uh uh father gary was his name but he knows i'm not catholic obviously and and uh he was shooting baskets i saw i watched him a couple times as i ran up the side street to my grandma's and uh he saw me one day he said hey want to shoot hoops said uh, I did he didn't say anything to me and then I did it started doing it every day and he never said anything but he, it was just him and I and you for, got and a few it changed like my life, life. It, it, it uh because he was cool this is a good looking dude cool and and also when those other guys who wanted to kill me saw him <laughs> they stopped because he's also big yeah and they're like what the, what the hell is going on what's the deal with this guy you know this guy is a, you know, he's a preacher and he's big and he's like athletic and he's Arnold's friend, who is not even. And then they would start it. Then he stopped, like he's his buddy. Okay, let's do. We're not, we're not gonna, you know, but he never said, "Hey, uh, go away." He pretended he didn't know what was going on. I would have been embarrassed. But he shot. He shot a lot, and then, uh, you know, it was, you know, it was it was, but it was a big deal. To me to have somebody that just said so didn't go hey if you're getting beat up i would have said no 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 that's not happening no those those guys i'm not no you know people that when i grew up their parents would bring them down to fight me get up you better get out of this because oh no, they're crazy <laughs> they are crazy <laughs> i'm like god dig it let me not go no they're just <laughs> vicious people that yeah but they're also 
you know, our town was divided, you know, there's straight up, the straight up racist, our next door neighbor's dog was a big black pit bull and his name was the N-word. That's, that's not, Whoa. there's no irony. Yeah. That, you know, it got lost a lot. There's those people and then there's people like us who just hated because they're so embarrassed. So there's the people like us. There was four black families too, four Jewish. So they were our friends and we just hated them because they're freaking embarrassing. And that's how every, in sports, in dodgeball, we're divided up, you know, uh, greaser. And also, did you smoke pot or did you drink? Because you couldn't do both. But we just hated those people. Now, until I got out of my town, I didn't know there was any other kind of racism except straight up Edward racism. Yeah, black and white. Yeah, just saying those, just people that say that word because they're scumbags mm. and they have no teeth and they're disgusting. But even being Jewish, you didn't experience it there? You they just, it's too small, not enough Jews to hate, you know. <laughs> I mean, we had, that's true, we had, a, you know, you hate, you say things. And, and with my grandpa's generation, there was sort of a secret uh you know, uh, you know, thing, and I knew enough about it from, uh, you know, and funny, funny enough for my other grandpa from what he brought back from Dachau and what he, uh, you know, because that had changed his life, and and you know, but in they plus they, they didn't want to talk about it, you know, but uh, it, you, it's really true. And then as you get out, you know, but but all but those people that uh, said the Edward, I mean, they said a lot of hikes and a lot of yeah. stuff and you just kind of well they those guys are the most ignorant d fucks that we ever met in our life they're getting they're so stupid you know that they're like you know they hate everything and everyone but I, we don't want the, anyone to ever see them that <laughs> right, we grew yeah. up with them right seriously yeah. that's what it is yeah. they are so embarrassing uh we don't want anybody to know they're white like we don't we need to put a sh a cone over. I know this. Oh. Uh, they're embarrassing to humanity, and like, I mean, I can't even explain to you how it is to be, you know. And then, but I saw some of their kids go go on and come to school with us and want to do better and do better. And then, so I had a lot of compassion, you know, uh, for the kids because they were really struggling with their parents. Jeez. And so I always felt like, well, you know, I had it, you know, things could have been a lot worse. You know, some kids want to get out of the, the alcoholism. Some want to get out of the freaking crazy uh, uh, racism, which is a disease. Like, it is, you know, and so you just want to go, I'm going to do, I'm going to try to pull away from this. Let's take a quick break and tell you about our first sponsor, Upstart. Now, during these economically turbulent times, everyone is looking for a way to feel more financially secure. So if you're still needlessly throwing money away every month at high interest credit card debt, it's time you checked out Upstart, the revolutionary online lending platform that knows you're more than just a credit score. Now is the time to find out how low your Upstart rate can be to help pay off high interest credit card debt. Unlike other lenders, Upstart can reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter rate. You don't need a degree or a diploma to apply, though. Upstart lets you skip going to the bank because it's completely online. They offer loans from $1,000 to $50,000 so you can consolidate your debt into one easy fixed rate payment. Upstart makes it fast and simple to check your rate. And since it's just a soft pull, it won't affect your credit score. The hard pull happens if you accept your rate and proceed with your application. And the best part is if the loan is approved and accepted, most people get their funds the very next business day. Over 400,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards or meet their financial goals. Free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt and get back to using your money your way with Upstart. See why Upstart has a 4.9 out of 5 rating on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash honeydew to find out how low your Upstart rate can be. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes. That's upstart.com slash honeydew. Our next sponsor is Omax. Living with chronic pain is the worst. It's more than a feeling of discomfort. It can affect your whole life. Many of you probably have some type of pain that's prevented you from relaxing and sleeping or stopped you from exercising. Perhaps it's been ongoing for a few weeks now and it hasn't improved with any of the treatments you tried. I just went to the doctor today. I got what's called trigger finger. It's been popping on me down here, this tendon. 
been popping off. I've been taking Omax Cryo Freeze, putting it right on there, and I promise you it's making a difference. All right, enter Omax Health. If you're looking to get rid of nagging muscle and joint pain immediately while providing long-lasting recovery, then you need to try the natural breakthrough pain relief solution, Cryo Freeze CBD Roll-On developed by Omax Health. This non-prescription triple action pain relief roll-on is specially formulated to block pain receptors, reduce inflammation, and improve muscle and joint flexibility. And the best part is this 100% natural CBD-powered remedy works its magic within 10 minutes of application and relief lasts up to eight hours, which is much longer than the over-the-counter products. Omax Health is offering my listeners 20% off a full bottle of cryo-free CBD pain relief roll-on. This discount also applies towards any product site-wide. So go to omaxhealth.com and enter code HONEYDEW to get 20% off cryo-freeze and site-wide. I'm telling you, this product is the real deal. So go to omaxhealth.com and enter code HONEYDEW to get 20% off and site-wide. And I just want to give a, a little special attention and shout out to my, my good friend Gary Adler who launched a new comic book company called Odd One Out. The first series of comic books they're publishing is Commando Place. And what I have here in my hands is Commando Place number one, Finding Konashiki. This debut comic is 53 pages of incredibly beautiful art with a unique and diverse cast of characters. It's set in a parallel universe. The heroes toggle between the video game world and the real world. It sounds crazy, but it's funny as hell. Go to kickstarter.com. You can search Commando Place and let's help Gary get the next five of these books made. If you're a fan of Doom Patrol or The Boys, you're going to love Commando Place. And now you can be part of its success. Go to kickstarter.com and search Commando Place. Get out there, Night Pants Nation. See if you can't help them achieve their goal. Or if you just want to read the comic, there's no pressure. You just go to amazon.com and you can search Commando Place and order yours today. Now, let's get back to the dude. You know, I so mean, how, to, how does it affect you as a father today? See, when well, you started fatherhood at 54, you had yeah, your first child at 54. I did. Um, and you know, it was a long journey because I've tried, uh, uh, you know, I found out in college that I could not be a father uh, the, the normal way. How'd you find well, it? Well, I, I went to the University of Iowa and I worked at the hospital school and uh, for a job. I donated blood and plasma. A lot for beer buddy <laughs> you know at both hospitals children's and the U of I and uh, and uh, I uh, at any time on the board they'd have different things for students for different jobs that you could donate you'd be part of an experiment like me and my buddies were up for whatever and uh, um, uh, uh, one time that the, I don't said donate bone barrel they need it for one of the kids they want to test and I, I stopped there and uh, uh, it was seventy five dollars. It was the most I'd ever seen for something, and I was like, "Yes!" Nobody even signed up, and I put my name first. You get your name first on any of these things. It's like if you work at a meat packing plant. There's a you know, different union if a jobs available. You put your name on it, you can move up. And if you work at a, a meat packing plant, you you start in livestock where it's so bad because there's so much dog. Uh, uh, hog shit everywhere you go inside to the kill floor where there's less hog shit and then you hopefully get in somewhere where it's refrigerated and then you go to the smoke shop where you can eat actual food that you're actually cutting so it's always about moving up within the 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 factory so i see this 75 dollars for for bone marrow yes that will be uh and then and so then i'm the only person signed up and the nurses that, that i work with at the hospital school we're not super fans because I was so, you know, they, they were like, oh, Tom, you, you're you doing that? I go, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm doing it. Uh, of course, you're our hero. I go, am I? Okay. And so I was like, well, that feels good. I've always liked to get blood and whatever else. And I did a sleep test for you guys, which was, uh, you know, I'll do anything for these kids. And and so the, I went to the, they, they took me into the room to give the, the blood sample I thought for the bone marrow, and uh, the the two nurses who I was I loved, but they always screwed with me. The, the the doctor comes in, he goes, Arnold's doing this. I go, yeah, and he turns, he goes, listen, I can give you a, a local, I I, I can dub it in that area, but it's still gonna hurt like a motherfucker. That's what the doctor actually said, and that nurse had pulled my my uh, un, un, loosened up my belt and pulled it down to my hip. And I was like, 
wh- this something something's up, and he turns around. You know, and I should know this from being on a farm. He had one of those corkscrew needles, and I'm like, "You got to be fucking kidding me!" And they he screwed it at the time. This was 1980s. <laughs> I was like, "Now you now I could have." And uh, this is people that work at the hospital still know this story. I could have run out. Like I could have pushed out. I could have for, run this out is for seventy five. Yeah, seventy five dollars in nineteen eighty though. But I and the, the nurse there looking straight at me like you. But it and also it was for potentially to say something. <laughs> I know. I guarantee it didn't. But it was to test. You know, although I am still a bone a bar- bow barrel donor, I'd say that in my my go. But. This is back in the day. They have much easier way. If you want to be a bone barrel donor, they don't do this. There's no way you have to do it this way to test you. I'm just going to tell you right now. To get it, you know, there's a... And so everybody's looking at me like, are you... If I ran out of there, I'd have to never work at the hospitals. I'd lose my job. I'd have to probably quit school. I mean, you don't. And so I just... It was... It was so painful. Oh, like right in the bone. Yeah, and- it, but, but so then right after that, I... Uh, and then everybody's like, yeah, they just screw it right in the boat. I mean, it stops hurting at a certain point. Cause, uh, but, you know, uh, oh. but right. But soon after that, it, there was a sign that said $35 for sperm. And they started a new fertility clinic there. And I was like, well, that is. And so I called my five roommates and, and I was like, I can't believe our luck. I'm going to do this three times a day. We went r- running over there and they're like, slow down. We're gonna have to test your sperm that I so I was like that that has to be easier, and and uh, you know and, and they and the doctor came back and said listen, uh, I got some bad news we we're never we you don't have you don't have enough you know a, a sperm and I and uh, you'll never get a woman pregnant the normal way basically break it down you have like four or three and I go. That seems like it'd be enough. And he, but he goes, <laughs> your roommate has two million. I go, that's fucking bullshit. Like they, the my, I'm still buddies with these guys. I go, he goes, you'll never get a woman pregnant the, the the normal way. And and uh, yeah, I was I was down about the, which is weird, because now I'd be thinking, what happened to that sperm? You know. But then I'm thinking, well, I just want to make a bunch of money. I'll do it all the time. But. Uh, uh, I, but then I also thought, well, this is also good news because, and I, there was many times we'd be at the at bar closing and, and, uh, I, I, I'd say to women, yeah, uh, yeah, I can't, uh, I don't know if you heard, but I can't get you pregnant. <laughs> like, I, I <laughs> yeah, maybe, that, maybe, that. uh, sweat on you and give you a staph infection, but that's about it. Like that was a calling, like in case you haven't heard. Yeah, I, you don't have to worry about me. But well, I, I went to do it one time also. I live with my grandmother, my father's mother, who was furious. A Catholic woman who was like, those are your children, those are your children. I thought the same thing. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this five mm-hmm. times a fucking day. But what I didn't know that I found out when I started, mm-hmm. I never ended up doing it. But what I didn't know is that you're only allowed to donate a certain amount of times in a, in a certain mile radius. Because mm-hmm. mathematically, it's possible mm-hmm. that those two children do meet up, mm-hmm. and then they're mm-hmm. incestual kids and everything mm-hmm. else. So yeah. I was like, "Well, that just sucked all the thunder out of this. If I can only jerk off three times, like that's right. not, that's what's that? Uh, seventy? That's one hundred and five dollars, and it's yeah. a wrap on that." Well, that's probably now. <laughs> that's this not was, in Iowa. In, in Iowa, <laughs> <laughs> no, this was back in yeah. The, that's pretty God, smart. The late nineties, but I hadn't even done the math on yeah. something like that well you know what uh so when i got married uh to roseanne uh, i uh, you know I've, i said uh, i really want a family uh, you talk about that before you get married and roseanne had kids and she and part of my attraction to her was she was a great mom you know we met in 1983 when i was 23 and i don't think she was 30 then back in the midwest she wasn't even famous and and we just hit it off we partied a lot and <laughs> I just moved from Iowa and I think she liked me because I was a guy that would just you know that was so different I, I wasn't that far out of the bee packing plant and and she was also so different she was this mom and she was like a feminist and uh she was and I really respected her and her, she was so funny her act was so funny and, and she did the thing that that men love more than anything we know we're good looking. 
but she 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 thought I was funny, and that's a if you want a man to love you and follow you around forever, you tell him how funny he is. You're right about because that. we're like I know, and you know, I, and I also, uh, and I think you're like this too. I you know, we I stood up for her no matter what. I mean that was just how I am, and when I came out to write her show, I, because it was her show, and she was always right. Because it's her show. It's a show about her life. And the problems on the show were uh, that there were uh, guys there. She never got created by credit on her show. And so at, at first, you know, at, at, you know, I started off writing jokes for her back, you know, when I, when I first met her. And then to see her doing those jokes on Johnny Carson was like, wow. You know, my friend is killing it and doing jokes that I wrote. And then eventually I came out to writer TV show and then anytime when there's problems I didn't understand exactly the finesse of how it works in Hollywood and, uh, and neither did she obviously but I I knew that it was her show about her life and you know I obviously I put the Iowa stuff in uh, a lot of the Iowa stuff where I'm from and and uh, but so she was right and she was funnier than them and it's her life so I'd say listen I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something. You're gonna you're gonna do it her way, or else. I don't know how else to say this, but I fucking I gonna th- I'm gonna throw somebody out the fucking window. I'll eventually, <laughs> or you're fired or whatever. I'm gonna you know kick somebody's ass. I don't know. Next year maybe I'll I'll have learn some more finesse. But what do you not understand about the show is called Roseanne, and you gotta quit fucking with her. Because I, I, you're fucking with me, and I just don't know. I don't know how how much more clear I can make this. And they were stunned because I think they'd used to. But I was all in. I was like, because she was right. There's no. And then it, it was a uh, uh, you know. Then I brought brought a bunch of my friends out from the Midwest to write the show. Half, and then I I found an executive producer with me that I trusted to brought half of old school guys from Hollywood. I said, well, I'm going to mix, I'm going to teach my friends to write the form because I, I know how funny they are. They've each got unique, funny voices. And then to write the form of a, of a sitcom script, it's a form. Mm-hmm. You learn to do that, but you can't teach people to be funny and write in these different voices. And then you, I also want people that respected her, that respected her character. Right. And uh, But I also needed to, I didn't want a shit show. I didn't want to go well, I'm gonna. We're gonna recreate stand-up comedy uh, or sitcoms. We're gonna completely. But we had to. We had to produce a different, sh- a new show every week. And there's no like. Well, it, we're just gonna. No, every week it had to be turned in, and I was aware of that too. So, so you know, look, I you, mean, it was. You have you have to get out of here in a little bit. Yeah. So I want to get you to. I want to talk to you about being a dad. Yeah. Well, I, you know, anyway, uh, uh, I know. So when 23, Roseanne, so you did try with Rose. Oh yeah. You did. So 20 at Roseanne, we did. I said, let's not do, uh, in vitro. I don't want you to put your body through that. It's my, my issue. We tried six times and failed. And, and the great thing about my first three wives, a total of 20 times failed. And the great thing about each one of them, uh, got remarried right away to another guy and had a baby with that guy. The normal way so i'm grateful that they did it uh, and, and, and i'll tell you something else that happened we went to an adoption lawyer and, and this happened each time and sharon stone another great friend of mine said hey because adoption takes a while that sharon stone said listen i want you to go to my adoption attorney he got my great boys he will expedite the process uh, and and you know uh, adoption you know, you can have a baby if your marriage isn't perfect the regular way. People do it all the time. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and uh, in vitro is so stressful. It's the hormones. The couple is stressed out. Things might not be perfect when you have that baby. You're, it's a blessing. But adoption, here's the thing. That baby has options. So you, you, the question is, is your marriage, are you good enough for that baby? Because people go... I'm going to get adopt a baby, and then I'm going to make... That's that a be. great point. Your baby is your baby, but mm-hmm. someone else's has a lot of options. Yeah. Your kids just got you. Yeah. Yeah. So, we, so Roseanne and I went to this uh, lawyer, and I thought, well, maybe it'll take uh, six months instead of two years, whatever. 
and we're like, yeah, we'd like to adopt it. He's like, when? I said, well, you know, ASAP. And he went to his computer and he pulls his picture off. He goes, how about in 45 minutes? Come on. This baby was just born in Wisconsin to a 15 year old girl. And I, 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 I put, tore the picture off. He handed it to us. I was looking at the picture. It's beautiful little red haired uh, little baby boy. And, and uh, I said uh, to Roseanne, do you, th- do you think we're good enough for that for that baby? And uh, and, I, and she could tell. I and she's like, no. I go, I don't think so either. And then we got <laughs> divorced. Awesome. That's when we got divorced. Really? <laughs> yeah. And that's basically what happened with my first three marriages. We were not good enough. Our marriage wasn't good enough to adopt a child. So that's when it was time that's to honest. move on. Yeah. But when I was 54, I did want to do. I want to do a sperm donor, by the way, because. Shaquille O'Neal was my next door neighbor for eight years. That's no joke. You got There's some no legendary joke. neighbors. There's no joke. <laughs> and you know, in Iowa, if you wanted to borrow a cup of sugar, and this is a fact, you went to your neighbor's door and you said, hey, neighbor, can I borrow a cup of sugar? And you know those cups you get for the fertility clinic? Mm-hmm. I mean, I swear on my life, we lived on a cul-de-sac, and I thought, how hard would it be for me to go get a cup of shack? And I swear, this is no joke. I just want, and here's what I think about God. I about I think our babies are up up there. We're all up there, and my whole life I've been waiting for my kids, and I've been, you know, and however my child, however I'm blessed, you know, it might be a seven foot tall black son, it might be a whatever, it might be through adoption, whatever that soul, whatever if I if it if it comes, it may not be in this lifetime, it may be whatever, and uh, how lucky. You know, I, I'm not going go, oh, well, wait a minute. Does it have my DNA? My DNA is fucked up. My DNA is alcoholism and crazy. Whatever, uh, you know, uh, uh, however the baby came, you know, however blessed if I get. And if it doesn't work out, I'm so blessed anyway. And so uh, when I met uh, uh, Ashley, the mother of my kids, you know, she said, I'm going to make sure you have a baby. But she's a. Uh, it, whatever worked, whatever the relationship was like, you know, looking back, she uh, said, We're, you're, you're going to do this, and she uh, made it happen. And what happened is we tried the in vitro three times, and then the doctor said, that is, there's nothing I can do. And I said, well, I, I just, I, I don't, I, I never on a, well, I said, too bad there's not something you can do on a man. And he goes, well, I'd like to, this is brilliant, doctor. He goes, well, there's something I'd like to experiment on a man. And I was like, and I, I saw her looking like, yeah, let's do that. I go, and, and the doctor's very good friend. He's he's worked on Rosanna and I, all these people. And he goes, I go, well, what do you want to do? And the way my son came into this world is I they cut my scrotum in half, which I we should have just done this day one, and took a big syringe, which is much like the, other story, and, and, and stuck it into my testicle and pulled one sperm out. Come on. And they happen to have one of her eggs. And thank, uh, this is a miracle. And they put them together, and it started multiplying. And it's a miracle, miracle. And it kept multiplying. And then they took that, and they put it uh, in a, a per uh, hoo-ha or whatever. And even without the sticky hormones, it just started it stayed one month, two months, and I got so nervous every month. Just wow, what a gift! And uh, 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 it, then it, every month to see more, more than a heartbeat, and then so nervous. And uh, and and I remember it was time to go to the hospital and get there. And the doctor's like, uh, uh, "Just uh, everything's fine. He's fine." But but uh, I was like, "Oh my god!" But he's breech. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a C-section. So Tom, you're gonna want to you're gonna want to stay behind that <laughs> curtain because you don't want to see this. And I was like, buddy, I worked at a meat packing plant. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going anywhere. I gotta shit. see this because I just don't believe it's happening. And it was so amazing. And and uh, the second, you know, uh, the second I see, you know, because because I'm also on point. Like, what if something goes sideways? I've delivered. This is something you don't want to tell your wife or tell me. I've delivered a lot of animals. Have you? A lot of calves. Oh, yeah, a lot of horses. Yeah, exactly. A lot. And it's wonderful. I say this, man. And sometimes things go sideways. And it does. you got to be in there. You know, the vet, the vet's there, whatever people you got there. 
but sometimes you got to put a knee under you got to bear down and sometimes can see you know it's always wonderful you know we raise cattle we raise horses we raise and uh <laughs> i know it sounds <laughs> don't but i'm always also on alert because that's your wife that's your baby right there you don't just assume that everybody here knows what they're doing right i mean as you're on point so uh and the way to do a c-section my because it because you know here's what you do if you think oh my god i can't take it because it is hard it is hard to see a doctor just let's be matter of fact cutting oh. your wife so what you do is you they put a circle around it and you go that's not her belly they're not cutting that's where the baby they put a circle around it and go that circle is a whole separate thing that's where the baby comes from that circle you don't identify it with the person. You take it out and you compartmentalize it. And so that's what you do. But anyway, he comes out and, and I, I, I help uh, get him what out of there. Yeah, what does off. that feel like? Well, it changed everything. First of all, I, uh, you know, you go back to your childhood and there's, uh, it just, I mean, it's everything. First of all, you go, uh, I was that perfect at one time and that small and and you really are shocked that that uh you know you look back on your uh you think wow uh you know because there's things that happen to you in your childhood you you you, you kind of go well you know I was this kind of kid or that kind of kid and and it's 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 hard to believe that you were also perfect like that that's how you you were, and it's also, you realize, oh my God, I care about everything about this kid, and and the way you had it, I mean, yeah, that's a that's a lotto well, ticket. It's a miracle, and you know, a, th- a little thought later was, my dad also cared about everything. Oh, I used to say, well, uh, you know, I got in so much trouble, I got arrested seven times, and was <laughs> I'm a teenager fighting the cops, fighting. Drinking, fighting, and he had to bail me out of jail. He had to bail me out of jail, and I'd be like, "Well, he doesn't. He doesn't care. He doesn't. He does. He just. He cares. He had to get up. He had to care." My other cousin was a cop, and he'd be like, "He cares." I go, "Yeah, yeah, he cares because he couldn't sleep," and I realize uh, you just he cared because you care about everything, and uh, and I, you know, every moment, and I, it was funny because I was cutting the cord. And, uh, and my son wrapped his fingers around the, the scissors. I almost, like, cut his fingers off oh right there. I was like, oh, geez. <laughs> and so oh, every, <laughs> but every second, and, uh, and, you know, my friend said, listen, <laughs> hit when, you know, let uh, your wife at the time do everything. But when he's seven, they'd come back. He's, he'll be phone when he's seven. And I said, well, yeah, I'm 54. I don't know where I'll be when he's seven. So I've changed every diaper. And stay with my daughter, who is a miracle. There's a frozen embryo. This is after yeah. the relationship ended. Tell me how you had yeah. her. Yeah. Uh, f- this, this guy did Tyler Henry, I think, Hollywood media. If I did not show, my, my ex asked me to do a favor. She wanted to get a reading from him. And he came over, and I, I did not believe. I don't believe in that. He's also a uh, one of the people that's talked to dead people. He's a, uh, whatever they're called, Eddie. And she liked to show a medium. Yeah. yeah. And he walks in my house and he goes like this. Your mother is here <laughs> and she is sorry, which is like an evergreen. Yeah, sure. you think? Right. But anyway, at the end, he does this reading and I wanted to bust him. But she's like big into this. So I thought, <laughs> I'll, you know, for her, whatever. And I go, hey, Tyler, you got any, got any questions? Yeah. Am I going to have another child? Are we? Which we weren't having sex. We weren't together. We weren't. And I knew that my dad, he's like this. Yes, you are. This is on the TV show, so you see. I go, really? Ah, uh, boy or girl? And he goes, a girl. And I was like, oh, my God. I, this is the best thing I've ever Because it's impossible. Physiologically, I walk him in the door. And then, because she's never said I was right about anything, she goes, I guess you're right. He's full of shit. Like, he's, <laughs> a, he's her idol. He's her <laughs> idol. That was, and, then, and then this is no shit. Uh. 48 hours later, I get a, a call from a cryo bank in Long Beach. And we use this other doctor in between Dr. Mars. That's our main guy. Just because, I don't know if he was out of town. And they had a, a frozen embryo stored down there. They were looking for me to pay 700 bucks. I'd owe them and I'd change business managers. They had it. And so she heard about it, drives down there 100 miles an hour, 
gets that shot up into her hoo-ha, and, and, and nine months later to the day, my daughter was born. Holy shit. And I'll tell you, man. Two, two, 48 I hours I know. Later. It is crazy because is. I was, I thought, I'm going to, you got to survive no matter what. No kids. I thought, man, I've been so blessed. And, you know, and then my son, I was like, okay, that is everything. And yeah, I did have a couple people say, well, you know, daughters are, I go, no, no. I had to have, and I'll tell you what, I'm glad that I have a daughter. Right. Did, hey, like, there's I that. It. It's, it's like I love it. And you know, it's calm. Uh, has it calmed it you is, down? Yeah. Well, geez. The girls you know. calm me down. I mean, but she, she just is, has a way. She's also a great son. I have to tell you, like my son, she's also by far the funniest. <laughs> but it's yeah. also how close they are. You know, I I I designed, decorated the rooms that they wanted, and we both sides were still in the same bed. But the way they, I just see them together. You know, when I get out of bed to P, which is more than they just moved together. I she she is his biggest fan. You know he's a big he's a hundred fifteen pounds. He just got out of kindergarten. He's a head taller. She's he's small. Big. She doesn't take any shit. And, but you, I watch out for that. But she is, uh, you know, I make sure she gets her. He sucks up a lot of air, and I've always made sure one day a week is just me and her. But they love each other so much because I feel like this is a you know this is a, a an incubator for every relationship they'll ever have and you know she hasn't seen she never saw her mom and i hug or she doesn't know how that works and you know after her mom officially moved out after you know i i showed the videos of uh her birth i, I went through she's like how did i get here and i said love you know we loved you so much and uh, we wanted you know and i made a little cartoon of your mom, I was born over here. You're in heaven, you guys. And I wanted to, and then your mom was born much later, much younger. But we wanted <laughs> you to be here. And then here you are. And that's how you came from love. And we both dreamed about you guys. And then we, we came together. And she goes, and then I was in mommy's uh, belly. I go, well, you started, you know, here. <laughs> I made it very clear. <laughs> you got yeah, to no, say that. Yeah. yeah. You oh, did. no, I no, well, I go, you started. started. Here, yeah. yeah, but I, I want you to know that, that you absolutely came from love because that's really important yeah and that's where you know and then your brother came first and then we that we all were waiting for you and i literally have a i went down and because her mom had a tough delivery with her the first four hours was they had i had to take up my shirt like in front of <laughs> i didn't know i was gonna do that kind of an emergency and uh hold her for a few hours put her on me for then i went home got her little brother and brought him down for the first time, and I have it all on video, and uh, it is so, I'm so glad I have that, because I'm explaining, uh, you know, and then we came down and got you, and uh, and and to see you, and it's, uh, and uh, she's like, I go, do you remember that? She goes, kind of, and, uh, <laughs> you know, but she does remember me making her bottles at night, because of, I bring her back downstairs, and she remembers. And once in a while, she'll say, can, can I have a bottle tonight? Just once it, I don't know if it kids, once in a while they want to be baby. And I'm, I'm always like, yeah. You yeah, know. I love it. I yeah. can tell you love it. I do. I can tell you appreciate it. Too. I appreciate That's a big it. Thing. Yeah. I wish my, I'm, I'm have a similar upbringing in the sense that my mother split early. My dad was a single dad, but he died when we were 16. So then we, we've got nobody. We live with his mom, that sort of thing. But, you know, I'm a twin. I'm a fraternal twin. But I wish when my daughter was born, I was just like, I wish she was here. How the fuck did you do it? Twins, then another kid like, you know, and I, I wish I had some him, not someone. Fuck it. Him to bounce questions off mm -hmm. of ideas off of like, hey, when I fucked up and did this, what would you what would you have liked to have done differently? Mm -hmm. You know, how can I better parent, better teach? Um. Well, look, you, we got to get you out of here all in right, a few man. minutes, but I, I have a question yeah. for you. I ask all my first time guests mm -hmm. this, um, after everything you've said, after mm -hmm. everything you've been through, what advice would you give to your 16 year old self look with the, with the benefit of hindsight? Well, easy does it, uh, you know, I mean, every uh, dream I've ever had has come true. I, 
I think, um, you know, I've, I've gotten very lucky about surviving, uh, um, you know, I think I, I identified a dream and then I, whether it be watching my dad watch Bob Hope on TV and laugh and go, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make my dad laugh on TV with Bob Hope beside me or whatever it was. Uh, just easy. Easy does it. Beware of, of uh, got very lucky, you know, barely, you know, God was very, very lucky. I got to, uh, um, I would have got married so much, saved, saved, saved some money. Uh, but I hate to change that sequence of mm -hmm. things, uh, you know. I like the easy does it. I mean, it changes yeah, nothing it, about yeah. your life yeah. in the course of it. Just mm -hmm. try to relax a little. But yeah. I wish I, I'm and still I, trying. I don't, still trying I don't mean it. surrender, <coughs> you no. know. Yeah. But uh, because I do think that uh, when you're a parent, you got to be ready. you got to be because uh, sometimes you have to stand up. We live in a world where, you know, uh, you gotta, you got to be. It's like uh, what I said about Roseanne in the show. i got to. Hey, listen, man, you gotta have people's backs. You're with you're with people. You gotta have their backs. You, they, I got these kids' backs. You know, I'd like to just uh, you said about have the energy. Well, I have to have the energy. There's no excuse. I've got to do it. And uh, I can sit around and say, "Well, I'm 61." Um, they don't care. They look at you like, "Well, how do they? What would they know about that?" Nothing. I got to do it all. I yeah. got to do it all. I got to get on the ground and play with them like my dad That's did. Right. I got to go outside and play with them. We got to play ball. We got to kick the ball. You got to box. We got to, you know, carry them up. My still son makes him car me carry him up the stairs. He's 115, that kind of weight, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, dude, that is with not... both of them. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like. A, I can't tell you, my shoulder's yeah. always hurt. I mm -hmm. got to switch sides and yeah. shit. Some, I'm like, oh, yeah. man. Well, good for you, Thanks, man. Buddy. Congratulations, you, too. But, but yeah. hold on. Well, please, plug everything you want to plug, everything. Well, we, you know, uh, Sasha Boggs is great comedian and great. <laughs> She's great with the kids. She, she lives with us. Uh, we have a, a great podcast uh, called Tom Arnold, Two of the Bush. She's a delight. We love her so much. She's 30. She's adorable. My friends all call, hey, are you guys having sex? I go, no, and they I didn't think so. She's really cute and young. I, I go, wait a minute. <laughs> we could. Seriously. So we did that. We do this podcast, and you can see it on YouTube, I think, or uh, Spotify or whatever, and it's going very well. And She's so funny. So we're working there, and I was like, hey, you did a podcast, right? I, I saw your, th your thing, and it's so funny. Let's do what here? Because we're quarantined with these kids, yeah. let's do a podcast yes. and talk about everything. She's so much younger; she knows nothing. You understand, right? And uh, she's so funny. And then, uh, but she's so good at the kids, and and uh, and so we do that. And then we made a music video. You got to see his music video because uh, kids. Mom's like, you should send him to school at rock camp this summer. I said, I am the school of rock camp. That's why I'm talking to your neighbor, <laughs> who I like has a music store. Yes. I go, yes. we do it all. We have, I have rappers. I have, I have great uh, filmmakers that come in and out of my place, teach the kids stuff. So we made a rap video. The kids like rap music. I don't know what kind of music. Uh, they do the TikTok. Yes. Yeah. And so it's a little filthy, but I, I have, I believe some of the words to the kids thing, but it's about our life being quarantined this summer. Uh, people asking me if Sasha and I are boating. And the kids, and we used everything about the house, and, it, and uh, we had so much fun. And uh, but that's the life. And you know, we're uh, I have a movie called High Holidays coming out in a month or so. With Jennifer Tilly's my wife, and the great Cloris Leachman is my mother-in-law. A bunch of really good actors, and then you know, uh, a lot of things. Whatever. I need to work, Ryan. I need to pay some bills. I'd like to go back and do some road shows and Man, I miss that. comedy. I know. It's, it'll be here. Uh, it'll okay, be here man. Okay, let's do it. Thank What's you, brother. Thank, Thank you for you. coming on. Congratulations Thanks, on the podcast and fatherhood. Uh, RyanSickler.com on all social media. Ryan Sickler. Uh, 
whatever it is. RyanSickler.com will talk to y'all. I'm on Twitter, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Twitter. A lot. At, uh, Instagram. Uh, Instagram, Instagram man. <laughs> I go hard on Twitter. <laughs> Beware. <laughs> uh, we'll talk to y'all next week. <laughs>